Good morning, everybody. Raise your hand if you know what just happened. You've been to a few of these conferences before. You got it. Notebook LM, AI, those are not real people. We got to give you an AI gag at every one of our events. So um, thanks for being here. Really excited to have you here at this amazing venue in Frisco. Um, and to take part in this event again. It's great to be back with the community. I have the honor of introducing your chair of the Board of Directors for RISO and the MRED CEO, Rebecca Jensen. Good morning, RISO. And um, not just those that had the opportunity to come out to this awesome training facility for the Dallas Cowboys, but we also have a lot of people online. So to all of you, thank you very much for spending your time here. Um, it was an amazing event last night, and um, this is the jersey that I wore. It is of Walter Payton from the Chicago Bears, and um, one of the things that I learned when researching this, um, because I have to admit I'm not a huge football fan, although after watching the plays of Walter Payton, that is certainly changing. I highly um, recommend that anyone go on and watch one of the greatest football players of all time. So Walter Payton is also nicknamed Sweetness. And um, he was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um, he played for the Chicago Bears for over, or I think, 13 seasons. And he has so many awards and accolades, including uh, 10 of the 13 years doing at least 1,200 yard rushes um, each season. And um, he helped bring the Chicago Bears to the Super Bowl. And there are many stories about Walter Payton, not just about football, but he was also involved in the creation of many organizations and charities throughout his lifetime. He was known as being a very smart and astute business person as well as a great uh, pro football player. And so there were many interviews with uh, Walter Payton, AKA Sweetness, and um, one of the reporters asked him, you know, what, um, how did you come to be the man that you are? And he said that he had learned early in life that it was commitments, dedication, and hard work that are the key to his success. And if you ever watched any of the videos of his training regimen, you would definitely see that he was all about all of those. And when he was asked to give advice to business leaders, he said that you need to surround yourself with people that are adept at making decisions under pressure, and that you have people that are competent and committed to doing things very, very well. And he gave a lot of credit to his coach, Mike Ditka, who incidentally used to be a, an assistant coach for the Dallas Cowboys, and he said that his coach Ditka was the very first coach that painted the goal for the team. He said Ditka came in and said, our goal is to go to the Super Bowl, which they did. And he said other coaches would say, hey, you need to come in and you need to work a little bit harder or you need to perfect this play or that play. And he said that it was Ditka that came in and said, no, that's not gonna give us, get us to the Super Bowl or this will, so continue that great work. So I thought that that was um, very germane to what we are all here today to do and over the next few days, because RISO also has a very clear mission that is about um, doing big things. Uh, RISO's mission is to create and promote and adopt the utilization of standards throughout the global real estate community. And um, to do this, we definitely need to have the commitment, dedication, and hard work of all of the individuals, which is why I'm very happy to say that, oh, that we are at the, um, I can't see the slide, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, the largest attendance in Riso Conference, so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so we are at capacity in this space. We also have a lot of people that are attending online. 
And um, we have so many people that are reaching out to RISO and this group to become more involved in the different standards that RISO is creating and adopting. And one of the things that we also are able to start doing a little bit more of is including different countries in the big goal of RISO. And so there we go. Here is the global growth of RISO. Uh, I remember when this conference was very small in attendance, and it is so heartening to see that we not only have more people here, but also we have the ability to show what successes RISO has been able to develop in the North American real estate markets and um, have them become utilized or at least talked about in the global environment. So the RISO conference, I think, there we go. <laughs> the RISO conference is um, the second annual on the global scale was held just a few weeks ago in Milan, Italy. And the attendance there was by people representing over 54 countries throughout the world. And they, in the countries that had not yet had the opportunity to adopt RISO standards, were definitely getting accolades to RISO and the US and, um, or the entire North American market, saying that it would very much help real estate on a global scale if we were all speaking the same language, if we all had the same data dictionary, if we, which can be translated now because of artificial intelligence and quite frankly, just the interest of people that want to translate that dictionary into different languages and um, not to mention our other standards that are absolutely not something that can just be utilized in North America. They are wanting to be adopted throughout the world. And I was able to not only attend, but I brought several members of the MRED Board of Directors with me because the brokers in my marketplace in Chicagoland we're so excited to know that the local MLS is reaching out internationally, in large part because I was told a statistic that um, just in my Chicagoland marketplace, a third of the people that live there speak English as a second language. And there are, our brokers are already doing business either by bringing in people from different countries to buy real estate in the Chicagoland area or having people that want to buy real estate internationally that are current residents of the Chicago land marketplace. So the use case is very much there for MLSs and technology vendors and brokers to pay attention to the global reach of RISO standards. And so I'm um, hoping that a lot of the online attendees are part of that global growing community. Um, you won't be disappointed by the content and the time that you spend here today, because just like in the words of Walter Payton, to surround yourself with very competent people, um, Riso's staff has definitely learned that lesson. And so the content that you're going to be able to preview and, and see and do maybe some deeper dives if you can attend the work groups is going to be time well spent. And um, I just wanna thank all of the attendees and also critically those that do participate in the RISO work groups. Without you, we obviously wouldn't have the standards. So um, to continue that, I want to invite back up to the stage our fearless leader, Mr. Sam DeBoard, to tell you a little bit more about the content over the next few days. Thank you.